Okay, hey everybody. I wanted to make a quick video to talk about a topic that's probably going to be kind of useful because Christmas just happened, um, but it can be useful any time of year. Um, and the reason I decided to talk about this topic is because I saw just a couple of my friends um, on Facebook mention this, and then I ran it by a couple of other friends saying, hey, would this be a good maybe blog post or something like that? And um, one of my friends, Erica, said, I would love to see you do a video of that. So, um, Erica, <laughs> here is your suggestion in the flesh. <laughs> um, I want to talk about reducing your debt. So, um, let me just kind of preface by saying I'm not exactly an expert at this topic. I don't really have any um, financial training background, but I have a lot of good sense and I don't have any debt that's non-mortgage. Um, and I've been able to kind of uh, completely erase my own debt using these types of tactics over the years, and so I just kind of wanted to share. So I'm gonna do it in um, sort of the format of, here's my 10 tips for reducing your debt. Um, so it's sort of a three-pronged approach, and what you're going to want to do is stop the bleed. So you, you do have to stop spending. Um, you have to reduce what you owe, and there's different things you can do to reduce what you already owe. And then you can find ways to bring in a little extra. So that's sort of the three-pronged approach I'm talking about. And so all these 10 tips that I'm going to give kind of fit into that. Um, I'm reading off my little envelope. Like I, I scratched down sort of my ideas for this um, about 20 minutes ago on an envelope, and I didn't want to rewrite it onto like... Um, cue cards or something like that that's a little too formal uh, for what I like to do. So here I go. I'm about to read off my envelope to you all. Uh, stop creating new debt. That's tip number one. Stop creating new debt. Do not take your card out and charge anything on it. If you don't have uh, the money in your bank account to buy it, then uh, try not to buy it. Okay. Um, I know a lot of people who clear you know, 20 or $30 off the top of their um, Kohl's card, and then they'll, on a whim, one day go back and charge a couple packs of socks on their Kohl's card again. Um, stop buying the socks, man. You gotta wait for a little while, and you gotta reduce things down instead of having a whole bunch of little credit cards and you're paying minimums. Stop the bleed. Um, so stop creating new debt. It's easier said than done. You get into um, a habit. Some people have a little bit of an addiction to buying things. Um, some people are trying to fill in an emotional void by shopping. Retail therapy, they call it. Um, and then sometimes you really kind of just need something for yourself or your kids. You know, maybe so-and-so really could use a new pack of underwear because those ones look disgusting. Um, and so you go and, and you charge it on a card and you just say, I'm going to figure out how to pay that off later. Um, I'll deal with it later. Um, so try with all your might to stop doing that unless it's something that you absolutely need. Um, stop justifying um, going out and shopping. Uh, tip number two, I put create and really implement a bare bones budget for a temporary amount of time. You don't have to do this forever. You're not going to suffer for years and years and years not being able to ever go and do anything fun. I never get to go see a movie. I never get to stop by McDonald's or just whatever it is that you that you like to do. Um, create a bare bones budget. You know, plan out your meals and and cook. Um, put aside a certain amount of money um, for, I guess you can call it fun, um, and and don't overspend that or. Um, you know, kind of reduce um, using some of the things you don't necessarily need. You know, cancel Netflix for a little while. Um, create whatever a bare bones budget would mean for you. Spend less than you're spending right now and it'll certainly help out and it'll allow you to do some of the other tips in here. Uh, number three, I put um, try writing out a debt ladder. Some people call it the snowball method and what you do is you just take all your debts, no matter what they are, and you list them um, smallest to biggest or biggest to smallest, whatever you like to do. And what you do is on all of the biggest debts, go ahead and pay those minimums. But on that smallest one, put whatever extra you can towards that. I don't care if it's only $3.50 above the minimum payment. If that's what you can do, put it towards that. You'll pay off that smaller debt quite a lot 
faster, I guess. I mean, it depends how impatient you are, what you consider fast or not fast, but anyway, you'll pay it off faster. And then that small debt gets knocked off and you've got that money that you've been putting towards that to start tackling the next biggest one. And just like a ladder, you climb up tackling those debts smallest to biggest while just keeping the minimum payments going um, on the ones that are really huge and overwhelming. Um, so uh, sit down and do yourself a favor, even if you don't intend to really follow the method, sit down and write out your debts smallest to biggest and see if you think it would be feasible for you. Um, you never know unless you, you write it down and you have all of it kind of staring in your face. Um, you can write it on an envelope that you have other you have cleaning ladies written on the back of it. <laughs> okay, um, tip number four, call and ask for lower interest rates. So some credit card companies are gonna tell you to kick rocks. They're gonna say, uh-uh, get out of here with that bull crap, I'm not doing it. Some of them will say yes. You can also negotiate lower rates on things like your cable. So let's say you have, you know, maybe DirecTV or something like that, and you've got Comcast over here saying, hey, if you sign up for us, there's this preliminary deal you can have. Call DirecTV and tell them about Comcast's deal. Tell them, look, I'm, I'm really interested in getting that deal. I need to pay less monthly for this. Are you willing to match it? Or can you come a little closer? Or can you reduce what I'm paying? Because uh, I'm about to go. And you would be surprised that even if they're only going to cut down your bill by five or six dollars and say, oh, well, I can give you the such and such rate, but I can't do much more than that. Take it. Do that. Um, you can do the same thing with your cell phone companies. You can negotiate with a different car insurance company. Um, you can, what other ideas do I have? Your internet, uh, if, if that's separate from your package. Um, just try to think of people that you can call. Don't be embarrassed about it because the worst they can say is, no, we can't do that. And then you're, you know, you're not in any worse position than you were before. Um, but if you make a list of who you might be able to call, and let's say there's six things that you have, uh, six ideas that you have, like three credit card companies, your cable, your insurance, you know, and your phone. And you call all six, and only two of them reduce, um, you know, make some kind of deal with you. Oh my gosh, you just got two deals. If it only frees up $42 a month for you, guess what you do with that $42 a month? You hit the lowest rung on that ladder that you wrote out with that extra money every month because that takes that debt off faster. Do that. Uh, tip number five, always use windfalls towards debt. So if you're in debt and you're drowning in it and someone says, um, hey sis, I'm going to send you a $50 Visa card for your birthday. You're going to want to go and shop for something. I deserve something. It is my birthday and this card is mine. Do yourself a favor and put it towards your bills, okay? You don't absolutely need to go buy something for that. That's a windfall. That's money that appeared out of the air for you. Do something constructive with it. I promise later on when you knock off this debt, you can go ahead and, you know, you can go to DSW and get a pair of sneakers or whatever you're gonna do with that money. Um, but for now, since you're trying to reduce debt, use those windfalls for, you know, the powers of good. Uh, tip number six, I wrote, be honest with yourself about what your vices cost you. Are you smoking a pack a day or even a pack a week? Pack of cigarettes is, I, I don't even know how much that costs. Is it 10 bucks or something like that? Um, I'm not going to sit here and talk about how not good for you it is. That's all I'll say about that. But it's something that you don't need. It's definitely something you want, you know? You want Starbucks in the morning. You want to eat out for lunch during your work day. Stop doing those things. Be really honest with yourself and say, all right, you know, if I, if I can quit my Starbucks habit, that gives me $4.75 a day. Um, what can, you know, even if it's just five days a week or something like that, what can I do with that 20 something dollars a week? Um, that adds up to a heck of a lot of money by the end of the month. If you have 80 extra, if you're in debt and you're strapped for cash and someone says, hey, I'm going to hand you 80 extra dollars a month. All you have to do is give up your coffee. You're going to want, you're going to think of it a little bit differently. You're going to take that 80 bucks and you're going to put it towards that smallest debt because you're trying to get that off the board faster. Um, so try to get rid of a vice. You know, it's hard. It's hard. I know it is. But 
it's going to make you feel less stressed in the long run and maybe you don't need the vices as much if you have less stress. I mean, think your way around it as positively as you possibly can. Um, tip number seven, I put sell some stuff that you don't need. So um, I usually kind of hand things down or I have a, like when I change out any of my decorations, I love doing that. I have a little pile of decorations in my garage and like my sister and my friends and stuff will come and they'll kind of dig through it like, what you got out there? Um, Lee, I still have that wine rack. I don't know if you still want that, but anyway, it's sitting in the garage. If you have stuff like that that you don't need, you can stick it on the marketplace and see if someone will buy it. Let's say you've got, you know, like a couple of kids' uh, winter coats. They're, you had to get them new ones this year because they grew out of them. What do you do with the old ones? Well, are they still in good shape? Stick it on the marketplace and say, hey, you know, I got a kid's 5T winter coat, um, you know, 10 bucks and it's yours. Um, and then take that 10 bucks and put it towards the minimum payment for that smallest debt. So add it um, to that. Um, or, you, you know, you can sell some things on eBay or Etsy if you'd like to do that. The marketplace is kind of the easier way to do things these days. Um, but uh, sometimes there's neighborhood yard sales this time of year. Depending on where you live in the country, there's not going to be too many outdoor yard sales. Um, sometimes you can get in on a flea market or something like that. But you get my point, right? Like sometimes you can take some things that you don't need um, that are in good shape that you know other people would be interested in and go ahead and get rid of those. But then don't take that money and go get, you know, um, some Starbucks or some McDonald's or um, whatever it is that you, you want to get. Um, put it towards one of your debts. Because remember, temporarily, you're trying to be bare bones and really focused. And I'm telling you, like, <laughs> you can start doing this stuff tomorrow and you're going to feel better about just the lay of the land for your finances quite quickly. I mean, it makes a dramatic difference um, within, you know, months. And I know that seems like a long time, but it's not. If you're drowning in debt and you're feeling bad, this can, it makes a big difference. Um, so tip eight, I put side hustles. So there are probably skills that you have that you're not thinking about that are worth something to someone else. And I'm not saying aggressively side hustle and stress yourself out, but some of the ideas I wrote down, I, I put, is there a talent that you can monetize? Sometimes I sound so smart when I'm writing. <laughs> um, so can you go on Rover and sign up to do some dog walking or dog sitting for someone? Um, can you do some household tasks? Can uh, you do some data entry? Can, um, there's, you know, I mentioned Rover, but there's like TaskRabbit, Upwork, Fiverr, and stuff like that. If you have skills that, that you can offer, but even if you, you know, just want to um, do, you know, you can do some kind of, smaller things that don't necessarily take a very specific um, skill, like if you're willing to um, clean somebody's house or, you know, just something like that. Whatever it is that you can think of, um, you might have a little bit of a side hustle that you can do, um, you know, outside of the hours where um, you would need to be taking care of the kids or, or you know, working your day job or whatever it is that you do um, during the day, you can figure something out. Um, so, you know, think about that because that's that other prong of the approach um, where you're trying to figure out ways to bring in more money, even if it's only a little bit, it's still going to help. Um, I put for number nine, look for maybe some seasonal work. Um, maybe you're taking care of a bunch of kids and you can't necessarily um, commit to a long-term um, full-time job, especially if it's, you know, in the hours of nine to five, um, it can be kind of tough. But if you have school-age kids, maybe while they're at school, could you work a short four-hour shift um, at a, se a seasonal job? A lot of people think of seasonal jobs as Christmas is coming, and so, you know, they'll look for something around the October time frame, and they know that the season ends in the January time frame, and that's what they think of. But, you know, think of spring and summertime seasonal jobs, like, you know, at um, an amusement park. Think about a plant nursery, how much extra help they need, you know, unloading um, and stocking up nurseries for this time of year because it's almost buying time. It's almost time to plant seeds soon. Um, think about mowing lawns um, in the spring. Um, and uh, what else did I put on here? Oh, that's cute to do some tours. I don't know what I meant by that, but maybe you could do some tours. <laughs> 
Um, so think about some seasonal work that you could just temporarily get involved in um, or ways to expand the hours that you already work temporarily, like get a little bit of overtime it's a, if it's available, maybe that takes a sacrifice from your other half or, or whatever it is. Um, actually, one of my nephews worked a whole bunch of extra hours just because he wanted to put some money towards paying off his car um, early. So, you know, it's a temporary push um, for, you know, just a means to an end. Um, and it's not a way that you have to live long term. So it might not be too stressful to do something just really quick and seasonally or get a little bit of OT hours just for a couple of weeks or, or whatever it may be just to get a debt paid off. Um, for number 10, and I, I put be wary of this idea, but sometimes if you're just trying to get something budged just in the interim, like um, you just need a little bit of time to get some things rolling, but you're really in a bad um, position um, with credit card debt, sometimes um, it can be an okay idea um, to do a balance transfer from a really high um, percentage rate. You know, if it has a high interest rate, maybe you can pay off, it's like robbing Peter to pay Paul, but you can pay off this high interest thing with this introductory low interest rate card and then commit to knocking that debt out in the 18 months that they'll give you of that 0% interest rate before it skyrockets up to 18% or whatever it is. So let's say, you know, your Kohl's card, you way overdid it. You charged $4,000 on it and you're paying 17%. So maybe you get this card over here, you pay off your Kohl's card, and then you've got 18 months of that 0% APR to pay that off as fast as you can. And maybe that's the one that you um, attack um, with any extra windfalls with your side hustle money and with the money that you get from quitting smoking, because I know you can do it, <laughs> um, or the money um, that might come from living that bare bones budget temporarily for a couple of months. Um, so anyway, that's that's really all I've got. I think that if you're really willing to institute these types of tips, it can do a lot for you. Um, and I hope you do it because you'll go to bed feeling better each night. Uh, you'll have less fights with your significant other and you'll just generally feel like you did a really adult thing for yourself. You'll get yourself under control. Um, you'll hone in some of those spending habits that you have and you'll learn a heck of a lot about yourself in the process. So uh, good luck to you. I hope you do it and here's to an awesome 2020. Thanks guys. Bye.